very pleased to welcome Nick Mason to the building. Thank you. So, yeah, Pink Floyd. 250 million albums sold worldwide. Uh, there's only, a, I think, a handful of people who have achieved that. And in my opinion, it's probably because they're great records. Uh, I'm mine too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my question to you is, how? Well, obviously, the drumming. <laughs> it's quite hard to sort of pinpoint what, what it is that makes these incredibly successful records. And it's a lot more than just making a good record. It's about timing, really. Uh, I think being, right, being the right band at the right place at the right time. Uh, the, the album that I think is probably the, the interesting one from that point of view is, is Dark Side. It, had, it wasn't just one thing. It, uh, it was a mixture of, uh, okay, so the music worked, but the lyrics were particularly... Uh, the interesting thing is Roger's writing, I think, is as relevant today and relevant to an older generation uh, as much as the, generation, uh, the, the age that we were at the time we made the album, which were, we were in our 20s. And, uh, but it was also the fact that Storm Thorgerson and Poe came up with, that, with the prism, which was a sort of fantastic trademark. Um, the engineering from Alan Parsons was really good, so it became a stereo test record as well. And last but not least, um, the record company, which was Capital Records, had a change of president, and the new president undertook to make this record work. Aside from playing, playing with Pink Floyd, actually, let's, let's go back. How did you start playing drums? Well, I actually started playing drums because rock and roll was invented, and uh, three or four of my friends decided that uh, we should start a band. None of us could play a single note on any single instrument. But one guy had actually bought a guitar, so that was the kickoff. It also meant that the, the guitar job was gone. So I very quickly announced that I was going to be the drummer. I asked for money for Christmas and assembled £7.50 and went to a drum shop called Foots in Denman Street and bought for £7.50 um, a gigster bass drum, a snare drum, a pair of bongos, a sort of hi-hat and a cymbal and managed to bag this up and take it home on the tube. Uh, and um, never looked back, really. <laughs> it's interesting because I think your drumming has kind of a very particular style. It's an incredibly patient way of playing the instruments. And compared to, compared to your peers, when you were, we were just discussing Ian Pace and John Bonham and Mitch Mitchell and all these people who are effectively your peers, you had a very, very different approach to the instrument. How did that develop? came about because I'd never had the technique to do some of those more advanced drum fills. And so you end up just finding the things that you can do and feel comfortable with. I mean, the reason I'm here now is entirely down to Ginger Baker, because I saw Ginger playing with Cream in 1966, I think. And uh, when they, they started, they played that f one of the tracks off their f first album, NSU. And seeing it, I just thought, now that I really would like to do. Just out of curiosity, what's, what's your perspective on, and this, is, this could be a bit controversial, but schools like this. So are you going to school to study how to play popular music? I think it's absolutely fantastic. It was absolutely unheard of in, you know, when we started starting off. Uh, the, the, the entry system, well, initially in rock and roll, it was usually from sort of British Railways or something like that. And then uh, it was assumed you'd have a sort of working life of about six months before things moved on. But then, again, for the Beatles era, um, it was art school. One of the questions that usually comes up, and I might as well preempt it, um, because it's something that interests me now, uh, is this thing about, well, what's, what, ad what advice would you give to... Uh, you know, young musician. Uh, just, you know, work with any musicians who want to work with you. Either they'll teach you something or you may, might teach them something and that's, that's a worthy thing to do as well. Were you involved in recording and putting together the sounds of cash machines to make a groove on money? 
Uh, yes, I was. Uh, some of it was sort of recorded with uh, sound sound effects that we'd made ourselves. In fact, we drilled out some coins and hung them on a string and tapped them, um, and then cut each one to about seven or eight inches long and and made just made a loop. But uh, yeah, and it was it was fun. It was interesting, and it's a shame we haven't got any pictures of the of the mixing sessions for Dark Side because we were in Studio Three and we were running probably seven or eight tape loops with with various different effects on them through the through the desk, and uh, of course these tape loops of all all sorts of different lengths were sort of spinning round through the studio over mic stands it absolutely looked like Heath Robinson um, what's good music for you and like your favorite song ever good good music is is uh, any music that that um, makes you that, that you enjoy and and it sort of goes back to the, what I was saying about playing with other people that it's I mean making music is, is um, well, it's very addictive, actually. It's the answer. You, you don't get tired of tired of it, and you don't have to have a big audience for it to make it enjoyable. You know, that's the interesting thing. You can almost have as much fun playing in a rehearsal room with people as playing. Actually, it's more fun than playing to fifty thousand people. I think. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Mason. <laughs> Thank you. It was outstanding, I'd say. Yeah, very <laughs> inspiring. And uh, yeah. Nick is a, such a cool guy. Uh, and it, it's such a great opportunity to have like him, uh, like co conversating with you, like so close. Yeah, and it felt very so friend. I mean, yeah, because often you have like these these guys. They are unreachable in a way. Um, they are like you know, but when you actually see them for re in a re real. Yeah. You see the real person, you can actually ask them questions. Yeah. It's much more inspiring, uh, so that's really cool, yeah.